if we are going to spend tons of money on Malaysian, Brazilian, Yaki, can we really get mad at black men when they're in Brazil and Malaysia looking for the very same thing that we are trying to manufacture and recreate? Hey yo, hey yo, hey yo, welcome to my channel. Hey yo, hey yo, listen up, listen up, hey yo, hey yo, hey yo, the wireless woman. Everybody want to be black, but don't nobody want to be a nigga. Uh. Hey yo, hey yo, hey yo. I am your girl, Debbie and Nikki, the original wireless woman, welcoming you back to our spot. Room 303. If you are new, welcome to my crew, but my returnees. You know what we do. If you like this video, well then, like this video. Let the comments reveal how you really feel feel and if you're feeling a vibe we'll go ahead on and subscribe but before you blink share this link welcome wi to another episode of the wireless woman we are still in season two despite a long break that i had to take as i promise you i always prioritize self-care even though I gotta say I missed you guys. Today we are going to be talking about if you can't beat them, that doesn't necessarily mean you have to join them. But before we get into today's content, you already know what time it is. What are we gonna do tomorrow night? The same thing we do every night, Pinky. Try to take over the world. It is time to call the roll. So I need all of my black women that are ready to make an exodus out of the matrix to the front of the class. It is time to read aloud. Shit, you in charge of the girls, right? I am in charge of the girls. Are you in charge of the girls? I am in charge of the girls. Okay. All right, welcome back Wi-Fi's too. Yet another episode of The Wireless Woman. Go ahead and do me a favor on your way in and like this video. Why? Because when you like it, well, I love it. Also, make sure that you subscribe to this channel. While you're doing that, click that bell button for notifications for when I go live and upload new videos. And also, Leave me some comments. I really look forward to reading them and engaging with you. If you don't agree with me, let me know. If you'd like to see some content on this channel that isn't currently here, I'm definitely receptive and open to all suggestions. You can email me at admin at thewirelesswoman.com. If it's something you don't feel quite comfortable leaving in the comments, but that you'd like me to respond to, Hit me up in that email. All right, so today we are going to talk about if you can't beat them, that doesn't mean that you necessarily have to join them. A little bit of story time. I was in the salon getting my locks done in this beautiful array that you see before you when I saw a young black girl she would have been between the ages of maybe eight nine up to 11 or 12 and she had her hair up in this high ponytail and had a braid that came down long past her bottom almost to like the back of her thighs and i started thinking to myself how disillusioning it must be to be a girl that young who's already being sent the message that her hair in its natural state is not the most beautiful form of self-expression. You know, ladies, we really are going to have to make some decisions if we're going to be super pro-black, if we're going to be pushing black agendas and really, really taking everything that we do as black women to the next level. 
what on what terms are we going to do that? I work in the corporate world and I see a lot of women that are hiding up underneath those lace front wigs that are doing everything within their <laughs> natural and unnatural power to straighten their hair really beyond the elasticity of black hair really doing things that are not in the best interest of the health the image of black women and i'm asking myself the question at what cost you know these unnatural hairstyles are super expensive one of the largest industries in this country is black hair care. African-American consumers dominate the entire beauty industry, contributing to about 85% of all sales in the U.S. in 2017, even though we only make up 14% of the population. But the saddest part about black hair care is that most of the money is being spent on trying to recreate artificial hairstyles, hair colors, hair textures on black women. My daughter is a biracial female. I've done a uh, content involving her and what her experience has been like as a biracial female. She has light skin. She doesn't have an African phenotype, but baby that hair, it tells a story. Now, if you think it is bad being dark skin with nappy hair, oh baby, be light skin with some. And I'm constantly having conversations with her because, you know, she wants to do the latest trendy hairstyle. And we have these ongoing conversations about her learning how to maintain her natural hair and really embracing how her hair is an extension of her identity. Black women have to stop feeling like the highest form of black expression is all the things that we put on in front of the world it's being able to take all of those things off and stand in your blackness it's being able to find beauty in who you were created to be that honestly connects you to the image of god if we are going to spend tons of money on malaysian brazilian yaki can we really get mad at black men when they're in Brazil and Malaysia looking for the very same thing that we are trying to manufacture and recreate? There is beauty in blackness. That's what we tell everybody else and then spend all these hours, all these trillions of dollars to stamp it out. I really believe that as we're getting to the place where the black experience is becoming something that everyone can take part in, it's been diluted down to something that is no longer unique. I mean, we literally look like Kardashians and Kardashians look like us to the point that you can't even draw a line of distinction. We got the BBLs, we got the lashes, we've got the nails, we've got the hair, we've got the accoutrements of being nine black women. Show my coochie print. Crop top, no bra, bitch. And I'm going to tell you one of the hardest journeys that I went through other than my weight loss journey, which don't say nothing. I put the weight back on, but if I did it before, I can do it again. If he did it before, he can do it again. If he did it before, he could do it again. If he did it before, he could do it but outside of my weight loss and my wireless woman journey, one of the hardest journeys was my lock journey. And I had been natural for many, many years when I decided to do my locks. I don't think I could have gone from hair extensions, braids and weaves and wigs to locks. I just don't think I could have made the transition that way. But because I had already been natural for many years, falling in love with my own image and the texture of my hair and learned to see beauty in it. By the time I decided to lock my hair, 
I was already very comfortable with my own natural hair. Now, I ain't going to lie. When I had my little baby locks, I mean, getting from the very top of my forehead down to the center of my forehead, it was a journey. And then because my hair texture is so coarse and my locks were so thick, like it took a long time before the stems, the roots grew out long enough for the hair to be heavy enough to start to grow down. Like literally my hair grew up like this high before it even started to hang over like it was going to come down i was tracy chapman fast car you get a fast car for a whole year i mean it was just sticking straight up <laughs> before it even started to act like it wanted to dangle down but that's what the blackness is the blackness cannot be explained. It can only be experienced. And if we are going to be black people being truthful and honest to the black experience that we're trying to get everyone else to embrace, we have to own it ourselves. The one thing I'm starting to realize about black people is that ownership, it just doesn't seem to be a priority to us. It doesn't seem to be an integral part of our value system. We do not own our own neighborhoods. We do not own the industries that we make so profitable. We don't own our homes. We don't own our businesses. Some of the largest black companies that I've seen be grown from obscurity to dominance have been sold off to white companies to capitalize off of all of the work after all of the patronage that black people have given to these black companies. You know, and now we've done that very same thing to our image. Black women in blonde hair, in, in silk presses that threaten the very fiber of the hair on their head. Silk presses that burn the hair like a relaxer would. That scorch the scalp. It's got to stop. And here's my thing. I don't agree with it. I know it's going to be highly unpopular for me to put my opinion in on this particular subject. But here's what I will say. These young girls are looking up to us as grown women to project to them what the healthy image of black women is. And we can't do that from a place of low self-esteem. We can't do that from a place of being unwilling unwilling to own black images, to have the hair that no other women can have, to have the bodies that no other women can have. If we're not going to do that for ourselves, can we at least do it for our children? If I see another fifth grader in a wig. And don't tell me that, that you didn't have time to do their hair. We have to teach these children to love the black skin, the black hair, the black bodies that they are in. Or else how can we be upset at our men for not loving us in an image that we are emulating? It's doing something to the black female psyche that cannot be undone. Standing in the mirror day after day after day, not being able to define myself by my hair was one of the most liberating processes that I've ever been through. And that is what I mean when I say be unplugged, unbothered, and unleashed. If you are with the shit, go ahead and drop me a fire headphones emoji in the comments. I would love to hear about your hair care journey. Tell me what some of your greatest challenges have been when it comes to embracing your own natural hair texture. Tell me what your deepest fears, vulnerabilities, and insecurities are when it comes to wearing artificial hair. Men, chime in, have my back. Please, like the one time that I'm actually trying to come in here and throw y'all a bone, have my back. But as always, I am your neighborhood wireless woman urging you.
to come out of the matrix into your natural state. Everything in nature exists in balance with itself. And everything that we want to see change in the world around us starts with what we first see in ourselves. And until the next episode, class is now dismissed. All right, thank you for sticking around until the very end of this episode. If you liked this content, then you may want to check out this video right here. And if you haven't already, for whatever insane reason, go ahead and subscribe to my channel by clicking this link right here. Until the next time, be unplugged, unbothered, and unleashed. You're not niggas.